morning I will be before you, Lord, but I want to come out of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 through 21. And it says, this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. Because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. Because he will save his people from their sins. You may be seated. I, I, I wanted to read it in a different translation and this is what it said. The birth of Jesus took place like this. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. Before they came to the marriage bed, Joseph discovered she was pregnant. And it was by the Holy Spirit, but he didn't know that. Joseph chagrined, which means distressed and humiliated, but noble, determined to take care of things quietly so Mary would not be disgraced. And while he was trying to figure a way out, he had a dream. God's angel spoke in the dream saying, Joseph, son of David, don't hesitate to get married. Mary's pregnancy is spirit conceived. God's Holy Spirit has made her pregnant. She will give birth to a son, and when she does, you, Joseph, will name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Look, I don't know about anybody in here, I don't know about anybody on Zoom, but if you are engaged to be married and you become pregnant with a child, come on, some of y'all know, a son that is not and does not belong to Mr. Fiance, soon to be husband, or may, or men, if you have found that one and have decided to make her miss whatever your last name may be, and you find out that she has become pregnant with a child, that you did not help procreate. That's some 21st century reality type stuff, TV, right? But this was not the case. Mary and Joseph, who were in their engagement period, their celibacy period, which was customary back then, about a year or so, Joseph had been made aware that his wife was now pregnant with a child. And it wasn't just any child. It would be a son, whom he would give the name, what? Jesus. So if I had to put a title on it, it would be the son that they call, come on here, Jesus. Now, not much is said about Joseph, but over in Luke, the angel of the Lord had told Mary what was going to happen. Luke 1, in the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God, you will be with child and give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus. In other words, Mary, you have nothing to fear. God has a surprise for you. You will become pregnant. You will give birth to a son. You will name him Jesus. And I could imagine, my God, Mary trying to wrap her head around the idea that God would have favor on her to carry such a child as this. Now, mind you, Mary was the birth mother of Jesus, but it was the act 
of the Holy Spirit that impregnated her. I hope I'm painting the picture clear. Luke 2, in those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census, and everyone went to his or own, her own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. There he would register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and expecting a child. And while they were there, guess what happened? That water broke. My God, it was time for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son, wrapped him in cloth and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them where in the end. Now, if I could just recall what I've read, the angel came to Mary, told her she had been favored by God with a special surprise. And you mean to tell me that there is no room anywhere to give birth to this unique son of mine? I could imagine her, do you know who I'm carrying? Do, do, you, do you really know who I, I, I'm giving birth to? I'm getting ready to give birth to the Messiah. Hmm, I'm carrying Jesus. I'm carrying the son that I am to name, my God, Jesus. After Mary gave birth, the Bible says that Jesus was placed in a manger. Uh, this, this son, this, this child named Jesus was not placed in a crib. He was not placed in a soft, cushiony cradle or bed. He was not placed uh, in an expensive uh, piece of cloth. He was wrapped in cloth and placed in a manger. And if you don't know what a manger is, it is a trough where they put food for animals to come and eat. Who is this child, the son that they would call Jesus? Luke 2, verse 8, and there were shepherds living in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will have a baby wrapped in cloth, lying in a manger. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Matthew 1, All of this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Who is this child, the son that they call Jesus? You see, Mary knew that her firstborn was special. I, I mean, after all, it was the act of the Holy Ghost that he was conceived. He was human in nature, but he was both God at the same time, possessing both divinity and humanity. The, the son that they would name Jesus. Luke 1 says, he will be great and he will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will have no end. The son that they call Jesus is the son of the most high, equal with Yahweh, a, a carbon copy of his father, God. And the phrase son of suggests that he would have the qualities and characteristics just like his father. Come on, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he 
gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. The son that they called Jesus would be the savior of the world. J Jesus being born would be the best gift man could ever receive and appreciate. Because not only was it good news of great joy then, but, but it's still good news and great joy right now. Uh, Isaiah 9 and 6 says, uh, For us to unto us a child uh, is born, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And not only that, but the son that they call Jesus, uh, a guy, yeah, yeah, would be called wonderful, counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. Uh, Jesus would be and still is called Emmanuel, God with us. Mary would give birth to a son and would be given the name Jesus, the one who would save his people from their sin. Mary knew she was who she was carrying, but little did she know that the path her son would have to take. Um, after walking 30 some odd years, uh, would be filled with uh, heartache and pain. My God, now let me stop right here. Mind you mothers and fathers, particularly mothers, we want our children, our child to be born healthy, come on and grow up with the least amount of bumps and bruises, amen? Uh, we want them to walk through this life uh, with the least amount of heartache and, come on, am I talking to some mothers in here? But don't worry, some, come on fathers, some, we want our children not to be physically hurt or put into hurt, harm, or danger if humanly possible, right? But, but when you hear Isaiah talk about this mother's son, who was born 100% human and 100% God, who would have thought that God's saving power would look like what Isaiah described in Isaiah 53? Um, the same Jesus, born in Bethlehem, born and placed in a manger. Isaiah says he grew up before him like a tender root and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance would make us desire him. I'm talking about baby Jesus. He was despised and rejected by man. A man of suffering, filled with pain, like one from whom people would hide their face. He was despised and held in low esteem. I'm talking about Jesus, the baby born in Bethlehem. Surely the Bible says he took our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by his own daddy, and afflicted. He was pierced for our transgression. He was crushed for our iniquity. He was punished and was brought on by peace on to him. And by his wounds, by Jesus' wounds, by Mary's babies, Jesus' wounds, the Bible says that we are healed. I'm talking about Jesus, the one who will save his people. I'm talking about Jesus. Well, 